Hello, it's Charles Cherney, and today I'd like to look at what's involved with buying a home in Cambridge or Somerville, Massachusetts. Well, first and foremost, there is a buyer, and that well may be you. And the buyer is assisted by a group of professionals on the journey from first consultation to closing. So first and foremost, the buyer has a buyer's agent. The norm here in Cambridge and Somerville, Mass, is for two real estate agents to be involved in the transaction. The buyer's agent for the buyer and the listing agent for the seller. And if you are a buyer, aim to find a buyer's agent who is experienced, informed, and engaged in assisting you in your search to buy a home. In addition to the realtor that you're working with as a buyer's agent, there is going to be a home inspector. Cambridge and Somerville has been a hot seller's market since 2012, and many times properties are generating multiple offers. For this reason, the home inspector could potentially be visiting the property you're interested in before bids are due for a home inspector consultation, since you may wish to present an offer without a home inspection contingency. So a home inspector is gonna be a part of the process. It's a question of when. They could come early or they could come on the other side of your offer being accepted. Then you will have a real estate attorney. As a buyer, typically you retain a real estate attorney in the transaction after your offer is accepted. The seller will have a real estate attorney as well, known as the seller's attorney. And the attorneys are going to communicate together in the transaction on the other side of offer acceptance, since they're going to be involved in creating a new document known as the purchase and sale that binds buyer to seller in the transaction and takes the two parties to the closing. In addition, you're going to have a lender. If you are in the market to buy a home in Cambridge or Somerville, likely you'll have reached out for a pre-approval letter and you'll be working with a local lender or mortgage broker in your search to buy and communicating your offer with a copy of your pre-approval letter and then working with your lender to get the loan set up for closing. You're also going to have an insurance agent who sets up insurance for you effective the date of the closing. So this is the team of primary professionals involved in the process of purchasing a home. As for house hunting, there is an online component where you're going to get daily email updates. So for example, through my websites, either charlescherney.com or through cambridgerealestate.com, my team's primary website, we can set you up for regular email updates of properties in your price range in the specific areas you're looking in that meet your specific requirements, for example, at least two beds. There's so many places online now that generate these updates from the MLS feed, but this online component of your search is an important piece of it since you're likely going to be looking on your phone, tablet, or computer on a regular basis, as will your agent at what's listed for sale to identify the properties of potential interest. There is an in-person component as well where your agent is going to arrange for showings by appointment. We have on cambridgerealestate.com, we being the Charles Journey team, outlined the elements of our working with you as agents for the buyer. So. We like to start with a consultation, and then, uh, of course, there's considering properties both online and in person. When something comes into focus that you like, we're going to complete a valuation analysis for you to help you understand what it's worth. If you decide to make an offer, we're going to offer negotiation and advice and counsel. And then when your offer is accepted, we're going to be involved with transaction management. And through the whole process, from the first consultation to the closing, there's going to be consistent communication with you as the buyer since we are your agent. So again, in this process, eventually you're going to find a place that you're going to want to make an offer on and you're going to have some standard contingencies likely in your offer. There may or may not be a home inspection contingency depending on whether or not you have visited the property before bids are due with the home inspector. Could be such contingencies as a radon contingency, a mortgage contingency. If you're bidding on a condo, there could be a condo doc and budget review contingency. So your offer will be presented. If there is an accepted offer, you're going to then proceed in short order, typically within a week or thereabouts, sometimes it moves more quickly, sometimes it takes a little longer, replace the signed accepted offer with the purchase and sale agreement, which we call the PNS, 
for short. Again, this document is drafted by the seller's real estate attorney and reviewed and approved by the buyer's real estate attorney. And it becomes the new agreement binding buyer and seller in the transaction. The offer is typically where it starts and that's usually accompanied by a check for $1,000. When that offer is replaced by the purchase and sale, the buyer typically writes a second check for 5% of the purchase price as a second deposit in the transaction. And so once that purchase and sale agreement is signed, you're on your way to closing. Closing typically is four to six weeks from accepted offer. And if the purchase and sale comes about a week to 10 days from accepted offer, it's usually just over a month or thereabouts between P&S and closing. So look, at the closing, the balance of the purchase price is going to be due. So if you've written a first check for 1,000 and a second for 5% of the purchase, price, expect to be writing an additional check due at closing, and the mortgage, let's say it's 80% of the purchase price, is also going to be due at the closing. You're going to owe legal fees to your real estate attorney. It's likely you will have purchased title insurance, and this is going to be due. There are loan origination fees that you can review with your lender, but typically it's not uh, uncommon for the costs of a loan to be 1% plus the loan amount. There'll be an adjustment at the closing for property taxes so that the seller pays through the day of the closing and the buyer then is going to be responsible for payment of taxes thereafter. And any adjustments are made at the closing as well for condo fee payments and utilities up through the closing paid by seller and thereafter by the buyer. That's the process from start to finish, if you will, with the team of professionals involved with you if you're the buyer and what the process looks like from house hunting to closing. The market has been strong in Cambridge and Somerville. Average sale price has been averaging for the most part over the last so many years over asking. And the average Average price of a single family, I should say for a single family, a condominium or a multi, uh, all three property types in Cambridge is north of a million four and in Somerville, north of a million. So both markets have healthy price points and strong uh, sales supporting those price points. I'm happy to share more with you about this process of what it looks like to buy a home in Cambridge or Somerville. I'm here to help you buy the right home, sell for the best price, or just answer your questions about the market, your home, and the community. My name is Charles Cherney. Please reach out at any time for assistance, and I hope you've found this overview of buying a home in Cambridge and Somerville helpful. Take care.